Time to rant! Uh, but before we do that, I have to mention that I haven't done any racing in a few weeks, so if you want to know why, there's a brief explanation at the end of this video, so check that if interested. But back to business! Like, I, I love career modes in games. So why is it that all the career modes in racing sims suck and why I don't want to play them? That's the question absolutely no one has asked, but I'm gonna answer anyways. Back in the 90s, when I started sim racing, I always waited for someone to create a career mode for racing sim. You start from a crappy team and then climb up the ladders to the big ones to become a champion and yada yada yada. And then everything would be great, and then my life would be perfect and fulfilled. Uh, turns out that didn't do it. That being said, there were some third-party programs to create a career, at least in the early 2000s. Uh, I mean, you just manually type in your results and sign con contracts based on your success and all that, and then play that all in the racing sim. Uh, I actually played one in 2001, was called F1 Career 3.0 and I played it with Grand Prix 3 with team dependent engine power and all that and it was fun for a couple of races. I started my career with Minority and was fighting at the back of the grid as I should but then I somehow got P5 in monsoon conditions in Monaco and immediately there was Ron Dennis on the phone saying welcome to McLaren and yes, that is the voice of Ron Dennis. And my interest died immediately. Also, my interest to sim racing died soon after that, so I didn't really try out F1 Challenge and those other games. Of course, nowadays you can just go and race online and there's your career. As for single player, there are career modes, but I just can't bother to play them because they all suck. Tried one in Project Cars a long time ago, but it seemed kind of scripted and the AI was terrible to race against. Uh, the career in Dirt Rally? Well, that's a joke. I've also tried the ones in Codemasters F1 games, but I always lose interest before I can do two full seasons. The thing is, the single player career mode always feels very static and scripted and you just climb up the ladders. If you watch people doing careers in the F1 games on YouTube, they're all essentially the same. Some manage to climb up the ladders faster and some slower, but it feels that's the only difference. Now, why is that and what would be the ultimate single player career mode that no one is ever going to create, no matter how much I complain? I'm gonna throw in two examples. Both games I used to play on this channel for an audience of three people back in the days. Championship Soccer, goaded by one man in Germany in 2005, and the legendary Falcon BMS. For Falcon I simply don't have time anymore, but Championship Soccer I still play from time to time. Now, why are the careers in those games so brilliant that you just keep coming back to them year after year after year after year? Behold, this is the answer. Fully dynamic world! Both these games consist of two independent games. In Falcon BMS there's of course a flight sim and the player is obviously flying a plane. The computer plays a complicated, fully dynamic strategy game in the background. You can choose uh, to not to participate at all, but just watch how the campaign goes. And it's fully dynamic, everything affects everything, and thus every campaign is always different. You feel how you're just one entity in a big universe instead of just playing a game that's built for you and around you. Same goes the Championship Soccer. A dynamic world where you're playing football as a single player, and the computer is playing a complicated dynamic manager game in the background. For example, if there's a major injury of a key player, the AI manager of that team then tries to hire someone to replace him, and that causes a chain of events that might affect the career of tens if not hundreds of players. Again, you feel how you're just one entity in a big universe trying to make it, instead of just playing a game that's built for you and around you. And it's not just climbing ladders, I mean, sometimes very improbable things happen that might draw your career in a completely different direction. 
Uh, you get into a club of your dreams, but the manager loses it and sells the key players or messes up the strategy. Then the team doesn't get results, loses confidence, loses morale, and you just end up being stuck in a bad team all over again. Super frustrating, but fantastic at the same time. No career is the same. When your player gets old and you retire, the manager game that's played by the PC still goes on if you so choose and you can just watch or create a new player into the world. Now I'm probably alone here, but for me that's what gets me hooked. That's the kind of career mode I would love to see in sim racing. Different classes with different drivers coming and going, even imaginary, I don't care. Computer playing a manager game in the background, teams making decisions based on resources, available engines, designers, drivers, skills, and you're just a li one little part of the universe. Even if you do well, you might be stuck in a bad team simply because there are no seats available or because of a binding contract that makes you crazy. And then, finally, after years and years of struggle, you finally make it. You get into a top team, ready to fulfill all your dreams, but then the team falls into the back of the grid because they swap into a bad engine. A perfect Fernando Alonso experience. A realistic career mode that's not just a ladder climbing game, but you can also fall off the ladder even without your own fault, and then you have to start climbing again. Honestly, there's probably no demand for stuff like this because a realistic career where even a failure by not your own fault is an option can be very frustrating and just put people off. Also, as I said before, one would have to create two separate games, a racing sim played by the player and a manager slash strategy game with potentially thousands of variables that's been played by the computer in the background very easily causes a massive feature creep that actually happened to Falcon 4.0 back in the days. Also, you can just have a career in iRacing against other people. That world is certainly dynamic enough, uh, doesn't really feed the imagination of a man-child like myself though. Anyway, tell me in the comments what you think. Am I like completely mad and alone with, with my crazy visions here? And for the end, uh, as promised, a brief explanation why I haven't been racing lately. Uh, many reasons for that, really. A lot of uh, stuff going on IRL. I've been having a lot of work, a holiday trip with the family, also UEFA Euro 2020 going on, and my uh, mom has unfortunately having health issues. I've been taking care of her as well, so yeah, hopefully things will settle down, but I wouldn't expect a race in a couple of weeks or so. Uh, probably gonna do GP3 next, because I haven't had any time to figure out IndyCar Racing 2 yet. Uh, besides, uh, there is the GP Laps IndyCar Racing 2 season going on, so I don't know if there's need to have two of those, at least at the same time. But at least I got to rant a little bit here. Take care. And see you next time.